Welcome to the session on theoretical principles of qualitative analysis. Here we are going to discuss the analysis of anions. The objective is to understand the theoretical principle involved in analysis of anions in a given mixture of salts. Le the learning outcomes at the end of the session, what we are going to learn the principle behind qualitative analysis of anions, the chemistry involved in separation of anions from cations, how to prepare sodium carbonate extract, what are the interfering anions, why and how certain anions interfere in the analysis of cations, how to remove those interfering anions, and the chemistry of special tests for combination of anions. Let us understand one by one and under this uh, qualitative analysis, we are going to just check the presence of anions. We are not bothered about the quantity of the anions in question. So there is a mixture and you are asked to uh, find out what are the anions and what are the cations present. So in this session, we are going to understand only the analysis of anions, how to uh, analyze anions, what are the steps involved in analysis of anions in, in a given mixture and finally in the result we are going to report uh, what are the anions present in the given mixture. So how to proceed uh, in that direction let us understand. So as you know the analysis of anion is important uh, before we proceed for the analysis of cation we need to find out what are the anions present. One of the important reason behind that is we need to ensure, we need to ascertain what are the interfering anions present in the mixture because if we do not know what are the interfering anions they are in the mixture and if, if we proceed with those then we will lead to erroneous results. So that is why we need to find out what are the anions present in the mixture before proceeding for the analysis of cations. Unlike uh, cation analysis where we have a systematic uh, scheme for analysis where the cations in the mixture can be classified into different groups based on the group precipitants or group reagents. Unlike that, for anions there is not so reagents available where the anions can be put under classification based on particular reagents. But for practical point of view the anions can be classified based on their response towards dilute and concentrated sulfuric acids. Once these mixtures are treated with uh, dilute sulfuric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid, they give enough indications to help us draw believable inferences regarding presence of certain anions. So based on that we can have a classification. So first one is to test the given mixture with dilute H2SO4. So how do you do that? Take a small amount of given mixture in a test tube and add uh, dilute sulfuric acid and observe it in cold condition and in hot condition as well. So let's say for example uh, observations are here. If we observe effervescence with evolution of colorless gas in cold condition then the possibility is there. The inference is the mixture may contain carbon uh, car carbonate out of which when this carbonate get treated with uh, dilute sulfuric acid that releases carbon dioxide which gives you effervescence. So that's an inference we can draw. See the mixture may contain carbonate as one of the anions. If effervescence with evolution of colorless gas takes place in hot condition then it may be due to uh, sulfur dioxide gas which gets released from sulfite when sulfite gets treated with dilute sulfuric acid, it releases sulfur dioxide gas which is responsible for effervescence 
with evolution of colorless gas when treated in uh, dilute H2SO4. If reddish brown fumes are observed in cold condition, then it may be due to uh, NO2 gas released from nitrite anions. So, if colorless gas smell like vinegar is coming out, then it could be due to acetic acid uh, released from acetate ion. When acetate ion gets treated in, with acid, dilute H2SO4, so that gives acetic acid which smells like vinegar. So this gives an indication the uh, mixture may contain acetate as one of the anions. Similarly, if colorless gas smell smelling like rotten eggs coming, then it could be due to uh, H2S gas released from sulfide radical present in the given mixture. Another way uh, to classify its uh, classify anions is by treating the given mixture with concentrated sulfuric acid. What we do here? Same thing. You take a small amount of mixture and treat it with uh, concentrated sulfuric acid and observe it. Uh, observe the changes. What is happening? If colorless gas with pungent smell is coming out, then it could be due to uh, HCl released from chloride as one of, one of the anions present in the mixture. If reddish brown vapors are coming, then it could be due to uh, HBr or bromine from bromide radical which is present in the given mixture. If violet vapor is coming, then it could be due to HI and iodine um, from iodide which is present in the given mixture. These are all, all the possibilities. It is it, These indications are um, there to help you to draw inferences. These are the possible radicals may be there in the given mixture. So test tube, uh, if test tube becomes oily or greasy with concentrated sulfuric acid, then it could be due to chloride. Reddish brown fumes, uh, if those depends on adding copper tunnings, it could be due to nitrates. Uh, the radical uh, present uh, may present in the mixture is nitrate, which releases uh, this uh, reddish brown fumes and which gets depends on adding copper tunnings. Colorless gas which turns lime water milky could be due to oxalate, carbon dioxide which is, re uh, which is released from oxalate. When oxalate get treated with concentrated sulfuric acid that releases carbon dioxide. Remember these are just the indications. Uh, those are helping us to draw inferences about the presence of these radicals. To ascertain whether these radicals are present or not, we are going to do confirmatory tests. <coughs> now detection of anions in solution. The identification of anions in solution is done by um, precipitation or by color change. So for a mixture which is less soluble in dilute acid, it is necessary to prepare solution of the mixture and another reason is also to separate anions from cations, we need to uh, prepare a solution uh, by uh, using sodium carbonate. So that's called sodium carbonate extract. Or uh, if the mixture is soluble in water, then we can also prepare water extract. So that this water extract or sodium carbonate extract which are in solution form, we can use those for testing individual anions with their confirmatory tests. Let us understand how to prepare this sodium carbonate extract and why to prepare this sodium extract, sodium carbonate extract and how, the, how does it help in separating anions from cations. Uh, remember the mixture is there. What we do, we take one part of mixture and three parts of sodium carbonate extract, sodium carbonate, solid sodium carbonate. The idea is the mixture should be treated with excess sodium carbonate and then uh, by adding water we heat it till the volume gets reduced and again add water to make up the loss of loss by evaporation then filter it what we get uh, a filtrate and a residue this filtrate is what is happening here this sodium carbonate when you add with mixture what happens these anions present in the mixture 
in form of three different salts so these three anions from these three corresponding salts they form soluble water soluble salts with sodium ion however the respective cations from three different salts they form salts with carbonate in form of their carbonates and they remain in form of uh, residue they are not water soluble and these anions they form salts in form of uh, sodium they are water soluble now this this is called sodium carbonate extract and this is how we are separating anions from cations so there are chances this cations may interfere in the taste of anions so this is one of the uh, this is uh, a, a, this is a way to separate anions from cations and this is called sodium carbonate extract and we are going to use this for the to uh, analyze anions individually by their confirmatory tests so what we have learned so far the principle behind qualitative analysis of anions the chemistry involved in separation of anions from cations and how to prepare sodium carbonate extract next is what are the interfering anions why and how certain anions interfere in the analysis of cations how to remove interfering anions let us understand about interfering anions is a very important portion because if you do not recognize those anions and if you do not rem remove them in a particular uh, a step then we are going to um, get erroneous uh, results so what are those anions those who are called interfering anions and as the name suggests do they interfere if they interfere where do they interfere so they interfere in the analysis of cations now next question is why do they interfere and the next question arises when do they interfere and how do they interfere if they are interfering then it's necessary to remove them but when to remove the question is why is it necessary to remove them before group 3 analysis why don't they interfere in first and second group analysis all these questions if we address then that will give us enough clarity about interfering anions and their removal you know so these anions are interfering anions are in question in our as per the syllabus uh, those anions mentioned uh, those uh, anions interfering anions those we need to uh, cover under our syllabus is uh, fluoride phosphate borate and oxalate so let us understand the chemistry behind this why are they interfering how are they interfering when are they interfering and if they are interfering how we are going to remove them see what is happening if you uh, recall the analysis of cations so the group reagents what we use in group 1 and group 2 are in acidic medium if you recall the group 1 and group 2 are under the grip of acidic uh, medium you know so the medium of analysis remains acidic uh, till group 2 once we move beyond group 2 the analysis of medium becomes basic there we add uh, ammonium hydroxide uh, in presence of ammonium uh, chloride so the uh, medium becomes basic so how is this medium change is uh, uh, going to decide whether those anions um, are going to interfere in the analysis of cations or not see uh, this uh, beyond group 3 beyond group 2 when medium becomes medium of analysis becomes uh, basic so these interfering anions how do they interfere they do form precipitates with cations of higher groups four fifth and sixth except alkali metals and also they do form uh, precipitates with uh, cations of third group and besides this formation of precipitates they also prevent precipitation of if we let us say for example if we do not remove those interfering anions what are they going to do 
without removing those interfering anions if we proceed further so there is a chance even if you add your respective group reagents you are not going to get the precipitates so these interfering anions are going to prevent precipitation of cations from third group to sixth group so that is why it is important to remove let us understand the chemistry as i have already said the till group 2 the medium remains acidic hydrochloric acid we use in first group in the second group group reagent is hydrogen sulfide in uh, hcl medium hydrochloric acid medium so the medium is acidic till group 2 uh, cations and what are those uh, anions those who interfere fluoride phosphate borate and oxalate in acidic medium they remain in form of acids in hf corresponding acids hf phosphoric acid boric acid and oxalic acid now these are weak uh, acids you know. so they they do not uh, ionize completely what happens again there is a question of common ion there is a role of common ion effect hcl being a strong or ionizable or ionizing acid the h plus which is uh, released they uh, suppress the ionization of these weak acids you know weakly ionized acids uh, of hf phosphoric acid boric acid and oxalic acid so what happens the uh, as a result of this weak ionization or the ionization gets their ionization gets suppressed so they remain in form of a solution so this concentration of these uh, anions remains less and they remain in in solution you know. but next you see when the medium changes when we move beyond group 2 when we make the medium of analysis basic by adding ammonium hydroxide what happens this hydroxide ion from ammonium hydroxide and acids h plus from this corresponding acids of uh, interfering anions they uh, combine to form water so as a result what happens there is no question of common ion here in fact because of this combination of oh minus from ammonium hydroxide and h plus from these acids they form water and because of this this uh, reaction proceeds further so this equilibrium shift towards in shifts in forward direction that means these acids of interfering anions they uh, become ionized and their concentration of anions fluoride phosphate borate and oxalates both increases and uh, as a result they form uh, as a result the ionic product exceeds the solubility product of phosphates fluorides oxalates borates of group 3 and higher group cations so uh, consequently they form insoluble or sparingly soluble precipitates when precipitates are formed uh, in group 3 if in group 3 the precipitates of group 4 group 5 and group 6 is formed in form of their uh, these uh, phosphates borates and oxalates and fluorides then we cannot proceed for the for the analysis of cations so that is a practical problem we face uh, because of presence of these interfering anions and that's what we call interference you know so that's how these anions they do interfere in the analysis of cations so this is the stage that is after group 2 analysis they interfere so all these uh, questions what we have asked in the beginning we have addressed that is why it is essential to remove these anions after group 2 analysis so now next uh, uh, question is how to remove these interfering anions we will address one by one um, the removal of removal of uh, fluoride and uh, borate before that removal of oxalate so removal of oxalate this gets decomposed when we treat it uh, in presence of acid you know so in a porcelain dish uh, evaporate the filtrate which you have got remember we need to remove these uh, interfering anions after group 2 so use the group 2 the filtrate which is left after group 2 analysis so take that filtrate in a porcelain dish evaporate it till it becomes a paste and then add 2 to 3 ml of concentrated hno3 and heat it till almost dryness repeat the process 2 3 times extract the dry mass with dilute hcl and fill 
filter it. Use the filtrate for group 3 analysis. So that's how the reaction takes place. This oxalates they uh, do decompose uh, in presence of this if we hit them in presence of uh, nitric acid. So now since um, this oxalate if only we have oxalate in the uh, as interfering anion in the mixture then simply by removing oxalate in uh, this uh, using this method the mixture is free from oxalate now so we can uh, extract the residue uh, with dilute HCl and filter and use the filter for third group analysis since oxalate is removed so this can be we can proceed further uh, for third group analysis there is a scheme uh, we will see it later removal of uh, fluoride and borate same procedure uh, group take the group to filtrate in a porcelain dish evaporate it till uh, you know becomes a paste then add concentrated HCl in this case what happens the fluoride present in the mixture and borate present in the mixture if we heat them in presence of acids they do form uh, hydrofluoric acid and orthoboric acid which are vol volatile those who can evaporate and uh, go off from our mixture you know, and that's how we can remove them from our mixture uh, since uh, they are removed so the extract can be uh, the residue can be extracted with dilute HCl and filter and uh, the filtrate can be used for third group analysis so here is a scheme uh, that is there in combined form take the filtrate of second group boil of H2S heat it till become it becomes paste then add uh, nitric acid heat till dryness repeat this procedure two to three times A to B add concentrated H, uh, HNO3 heat it to dryness again repeat add uh, concentrated HNO3 heat it to dryness so two three times this process need to be repeated uh, in order to ensure the complete decomposition of oxalate present in the mixture now the residue which is left is free from oxalate since oxalate is decomposed uh, now it is the, the residue which is there is uh, free from oxalate now extract this by adding dilute HCl and then filter use the filtrate for uh, third group analysis similarly boil of H2S heat it till it becomes paste add concentrated HCl uh, for fluoride and borate heat it till dryness repeat the same A to B procedure then the residue which is left uh, because um, fluoride and borate in form of their acids these volatile acids they got evaporated or volatile edges and then the extract which is there the residue which is there is free from fluoride and borate so they extract this residue in dilute HCl and they use, then filter it use the filtrate for third group analysis so that's how if we have oxalate fluoride and borate we can easily remove by simply treating them uh, with acids but the question is if we have phosphate so this uh, removal is little bit uh, not lengthy I would say but it's very interesting as well so there are two procedures we follow for removal of phosphate now. so this procedure uh, little bit lengthy so that is why it is uh, advisable uh, before proceeding for removal of uh, phosphate after group 2 precip precipitates remember you are going to remove these uh, radicals oxalate, fluoride, borate or phosphate if you have got this in your anion uh, analysis if you have not got their presence no need to remove them if your mixture doesn't contain phosphate, phosphate no need to remove phosphate no. no need to follow this procedure so uh, what to double check what we do test the presence of phosphate with group 2 filtrate so if you got phosphate then proceed for removal of phosphate so one of the methods is we are going to discuss two methods one is zirconium nitrate method another is acetate buffer ferric chloride method so let us understand one by one the removal of phosphate by acetate buffer uh, ferric chloride method so the chemistry behind this is group 3 cations iron aluminium and chromium they are going to form their precipitates in form of their phosphates and we can separate them 
and this acetate buffer which we are going to use by adding acetic acid and a salt of either sodium acetate or ammonium acetate so by adding this acetate buffer we are going to control the ph in the range of 4 to 5 4 to 7 in this ph range the cations of group 4 5 and 6 they will remain in soluble form they will not form precipitates in form of their phosphates so that is the role of this acetate buffer further this acetate buffer also form this uh, basic acetates of third group cation so we'll understand uh, those in detail so the procedure is in a pro again same thing we need to take uh, the filtrate of filtrate left after group 2 analysis in a porcelain dish then add uh, concentrated nitric acid for 2-3 minutes heat it and then cool add uh, ammonium chloride and excess ammonium hydroxide while shaking till the solution smells ammonia then to it add sodium acetate or ammonium acetate then add acetic acid while shaking until the solution smells vinegar now filter the solution and use the residue for group 3 analysis now what is the uh, you know group 3 residue and filtrate we will see this if the color of the filtrate obtained is not reduced that means iron is not present then add few drops of neutral free chloride solution so how to neutralize free chloride solution because the free chloride solution which is uh, uh, kept normally uh, available in our uh, um, bench so it's it's acidic so you need to neutralize it by adding ammonia we keep on adding ammonia till we get uh, precipitate so the excess precipitate can be either filtered or can be neutralized by adding original perichloride solution that's how we neutralize uh, uh, perichloride so you add neutral perichloride solution continue adding neutral perichloride solution until the solution acquires brownish red color so that means iron excess iron is there so when you are adding iron excess iron what is the interest here so iron will form iron phosphate precipitates so add water to equal volume and boil for two to three minutes filter in hot and discard the residue with filtrate proceed for fourth group we are going to understand in uh, let us understand this in the scheme it will be a little bit easier so you have the group to filtrate boil off h2s gas then add nitric acid then add ammonium chloride and excess ammonia which is the group reagent for third group so then add your acetate buffer that is uh, by adding acetic acid and uh, a salt of acetate that is sodium acetate or ammonium acetate then filter it so you will get two things one filtrate and residue residue is what are, what are there in the residue the residue when you added um, uh, the phosphate is there in the mixer and you added ammonium chloride and ammonia and you have added acetate buffer so what you are going to get this group 3 cations are going to form their precipitates in form of their phosphates in form of their acetates and hydroxide hydroxide we have added ammonium hydroxide acetate we have added acetic acid and ammonium acetate buffer we have added and phosphate which is there in the mixer so they are going to form their phosphates ferric fer phosphate aluminium phosphate and chromium phosphate so these are the residue so then filtrate filtrate contains the higher group cations in order to uh, now there is uh, two uh, possibilities if the filtrate is brown is red that means it contains iron then what we need to do either it may contain iron which will look brown is red or if it is not containing iron which will not look brown so if the filtrate is not looking brown if the filtrate is not brown add neutral free chloride and then equal volume of water and boil it then filter in hot condition so this uh, hot condition filtration you need to do and then reject the residue which you get and the filtrate which is now free from phosphates and third, third group cations 
so this filtrate can be used for higher group analysis similarly another possibility if your filtrate is brownish red that means it contains iron so no need to add this ferric neutral ferric chloride so simply add water uh, equal volume of water and boil why are we adding equal volume of water and boiling see adding equal volume of water uh, you are diluting the solution and boiling it see in dilute condition and dilute and hot condition this um, acetates of ferric aluminum and chromium they gets precipitated and uh, when you filter them in hot condition they remain in form of they get separated in form of their acetates so completely you are able to separate third group cations from higher group cations so what we did we got the phosphate free and got cations of uh, third group also free so now we have the filtrate which is uh, fit for higher group cation analysis another uh, method we have removal of phosphate by zirconium nitrate method it is little bit uh, simpler what we do same again you take a group to filtrate and uh, evaporate it then add concentrated hcl then add uh, ammonium chloride and uh, stir it and dissolve it then add zirconium nitrate slowly with stirring till precipitation is complete so precipitation we get in form of zirconium phosphate so precipitate you get get filter that the residue you which you get is zirconium phosphate reject that because your purpose is to remove uh, phosphate which is an interfering anion so the, the filtrate which you have got is free from phosphate now add ammonium chloride and ammonia which is a group 3 reagent uh, then you filter it filter it if group 3 cations are present you will get your residue then test uh, for group 3 cations with the residue and with filter it you proceed for group 4 cations so uh, here is a scheme same thing we have explained group 2 filter it boil off h2s and then evaporate it then add uh, ammonium chloride then add zirconium nitrate heat it and boil then uh, the filter it the residue which you get in form of zirconium phosphate so that we need to reject because our uh, intention is to separate phosphate in form of zirconium so zirconium metal we are adding that forms a very stable complex with phosphate so which we can get in form of pre precipitate so that can be rejected and that's how we can separate phosphate from the mixture and the filtrate is there free from phosphate you add the third group uh, reagent that is ammonium chloride and ammonia and if third group cations are present that will form precipitates and uh, filter it the with the residue you proceed for group 3 cation analysis and with filtrate you proceed for group 4 cation analysis you know. so that's how we have uh, separated we have removed uh, interfering anions from the mixture so what we have learned the principle behind qualitative analysis of anions the chemistry involved in separation of anions from cations how to prepare sodium carbonate extract what are the interfering anions why and how certain anions interfere in the analysis of cation how to remove interfering anions and uh, this uh, last one the chemistry of special tests for combination of anions we are going to address it in separate uh, session thank you very much for the attention